Greetings, this is Tom Horton at Further to Fly Photography. The Summit Photography Group in Park City recently asked me to do a presentation about how to photograph a geologic wonder in southern Utah, northern Arizona called the Wave. So I'm providing that presentation for you here with a quick narration. I'm not going to read all the words, I'll just make commentary as we go along. The Wave is also known as Coyote Buttes North. It's part of uh, the Vermilion Cliffs National Monument. There is also a Coyote Buttes South, which is a different place. Requires an entirely different method of getting there. But don't get them confused. When you see references to Coyote Buttes North, it's the same thing as the Wave. It's uh, basically on the Utah-Arizona border between Kanab, Utah, Page, Arizona. Here's a map of the area. Uh, you can see it's in the middle of a lot of outstanding desert photography sites. North Rim of the Grand Canyon, Lake Powell, Page, Arizona, and Antelope Canyon, Grand Staircase, Escalante National Monument, Coral Pink Sand Dunes, Vermilion Cliffs. A lot of good photography to be had in that area. You're going to be going along House Rock Road, which uh, has junctions both with 89, Highway 89 between Kanab and Page, and Highway 89A, which is the main route to the north rim of the Grand Canyon. Uh, House Rock Road is passable by, by passenger vehicles in good weather. When it gets wet, uh, four-wheel drive might, not, might be a good idea if it gets really wet. Sometimes even four-wheel drive is not enough. So, but good weather, no problem. If camping is your thing, uh, here's a list of campsites. The closest one is a BLM primitive site just south of the Wire Pass trailhead to the Wave. My favorite in the area is Jacob Lake Campground because it's up higher in the pine trees, it's cooler in the summer. Uh, very nice place. Here are some GPS coordinates of interest. The junctions between House Rock Road and US 89 and 89A are signed, but they can come upon you pretty fast, so I've uh, provided the GPS coordinates to those here. Make sure you don't miss those junctions or it can get confusing. Basic challenge uh, to the wave is getting in because the National Park Service limits it to 20 visitors a day because of its delicate uh, environmental situation. That's 20 visitors, not 20 groups or 20 permits, but 20 individual visitors. These two websites here will give you all the information on uh, how, to, how to get either an online or walk-up permit, and the site for, for making an online application is here as well. If you get a permit online, uh, your permits are mailed to you. Notice they're only five dollars a piece. That's a bargain. In the high visitor seasons, which are basically spring and fall, it's pretty hard to get a permit uh, by lottery. Uh, I've heard the odds to be around five percent. However, you can submit multiple applications for multiple days, so the best way to do it is to to set aside a, a week or or even two and make an application for each day and uh, if you're persistent you probably probably get a permit on the off seasons which are the heat of summer and the cold of winter uh, it's not that difficult to get a permit up 25 percent odds for any given day on the lottery i'm told half the permits are reserved for walk-up visitors uh, those are granted for the next day so if that if you want to try that, uh, Kanab Visitor Center at uh, Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument is the only place you can get them. Show up at 8.30 in the morning, make a, an application, and if there are excess applications, remember it's 10 individuals, not 10 groups, or 10 permits. Um, they have a lottery at 9 a.m., and there are usually excess applications, so again, you may not... Uh, score on the lottery for any given day. Uh, 
During the uh, the main visitor season, March through November, they do the permit walk-up permit thing seven days a week. Otherwise, it's five days a week, not including holidays. However, they do uh, provide permits for all days of the week. So on Fridays in the off season, they'll also do permits for Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Okay, the trail into the wave, 2.8 miles. Uh, it's going to be slower than you think because about half of it is on sand. Uh, you leave from a trailhead called the Wire Pass Trailhead. You cross a ridge, and then you're walking on rock towards the south. The uh, once you cross the ridge and turn to the south, the wave is fairly visible as a as a big white patch on the ridge line. Um, it's harder than harder than you think to get lost getting there. In fact, here's a movie which shows us the trail to the wave. The trailhead has a bathroom and ample parking. You enter a sandy wash and you're walking on that for a while. This wash, by the way, when you follow it long enough, becomes Buckskin Gulch, which is another outstanding slot canyon site that has good photo opportunities. However, it's a multi-day trip, a backpacking trip, if you want to try that. After a while, you leave the wash and go up on the pl plateau and head for the pass on the ridge. You're still walking on sand, however, and that's slow going. And you see there's no cover at all, so if it's hot, if the weather's hot, you're going to get hot. You're going to need a lot of water. So take that into consideration. Okay, approaching the ridge, you start walking on rock up and over the ridge. It's not terribly steep or difficult. You'll, you'll have no problems with it. Then you turn to the south and you're walking to the south keeping the ridge on your right. You're walking on rock here so there's no trail to follow except for cairns that have been set up. However, multiple people have set up multiple different trails with cairns and so it can be confusing. However, as I said before, just look to the south, see the wave as a white patch on the ridge and just head for it. You'll get there. It's pretty hard actually to get lost. Uh, presently you'll come to another sandy wash and the wave is just on the other side of it. By the way, there are a lot of interesting photo possibilities uh, on the ridge that you're uh, following as well. You might want to detour and explore those. Up out of the wash, uh, up a little hill, and bingo, you're at the wave. As you can see, it's not a very big place. Um, you can there are a lot of little nooks and and side channels and places to explore but uh, not uh, a lot of walking to do so um, you'll you'll be um, in a fairly small area there just to summarize so far access the hard part is getting a permit uh, plan for the hike plan to go slower than you think you will if the weather is hot, take a gallon of water per person at least. The fo photo challenges uh, will be carrying your gear. You want to take uh, a lot of gear because it'll be hard to come back if there's something you forgot. Uh, sand and dust can be a problem, uh, both in your clothing and in your camera gear. And as you'll see, one of the main photo problems is doing something different or putting your personal stamp on your photography because everybody has done just about everything it seems. Some quick gear recommendations. Uh, if you have mirrorless or micro four thirds equipment, uh, take it. You'll appreciate the lightweight. Um, wide, super wide, even fisheye lenses are the lenses of choice. You want to do, take a tripod for some long exposure work, HDR work, and of course if you're doing some, some work at night. Sensor cleaning kit would be a good idea, especially if it's windy. A backup body, another good idea. 
Take a flashlight, of course, uh, on, in the event you're hiking in the dark, but you almost so might want to take a flash unit if you're doing some shooting in the dark. Uh, other ideas, a medium format camera for high detail, uh, a tilt shift lens for some focus effects, and you'll even see that people have taken models to the wave. Um, think about that if that is your thing. So here's basically the one shot that everybody gets. You can see that the main attraction is the the uh, intense red, orange, and white colors and the uh, beautiful stripes in the rock, the undul undulations, uh, a lot of abstract possibilities, uh, really kind of surreal, unworldly kind of views. There are little channels off to the sides here and there. This shows you the scale that you're working with. If it's been raining, it may fill up a little bit with water. It's pretty shallow, foot, two feet is the most you'll find, but it offers some good reflection possibilities. Some ideas for uh, something a little different than the usual stuff. Uh, do some HDR work because you have uh, some bright sunlight and deep shadow together. You have uh, dynamic range problems that that can help with. Uh, stay for sunrise and sunset. Uh, camping is not allowed at the wave, however that doesn't mean you can't stay up overnight and catch a sunrise and sunset. Uh, take a fisheye lens, it'll get you some wild abstractions. Uh, try some close-ups. Uh, again, more kind of abstract work. You find some amazing textural details and interesting colors that you can juxtapose. When water is standing in the wave, you can get some great reflection ideas. And HDR is a good way to handle reflections, of course. Uh, try some different seasons. Uh, often you can get into the wave in the winter if it's if the road is passable. Uh, the road's going to be more difficult in the winter, of course. You'll definitely want four-wheel drive, and if it's a blizzard, I wouldn't try it. Uh, the hike in the winter can also be difficult, so be sure you're prepared if you want to try that. Uh, a thunderstorm could be nice. Again, uh, be confident of your abilities to hike in bad weather. Nighttime can be a lot of fun. Star trails or Milky Way shots, uh, light painting, uh, flash units on the on the red and orange rock can get you some interesting stuff. And don't forget monochrome as well. Uh, you would probably shooting be shooting in color and converting to monochrome w later, but uh, I've found that you can get some really nice monochrome conversions of uh, of some of the subject matter in the wave. Models have been taken to the wave. Uh, you can try that. Uh, I would not ask your model to volunteer. <laughs> I would definitely pay them because it's a long walk. Um, I've seen people have wedding and engagement pictures at the wave. Again, that's going to be a very persistent, dedicated couple to make that hike for their wedding pictures, but go for it. And then, of course, um, just show up, see what inspires you, see what uh, what ideas come, and put your own stamp on it. Here are a few other websites that have information of interest. If you think you might want a guide, there are plenty of guides available, both in Canab and Page. Um, guides, however, cannot get your permits for you. Uh, permit you have to get for yourself, and then hire a guide if you want one. If you have any questions, shoot me a uh, message at furthertofly.com or on Facebook at Further to Fly Photography. And hope you've enjoyed this.